His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace well wishers from the people of the Northern Governorate within the framework of His Majesty the King's meeting with the people of Bahrain. The well wishers greeted His Majesty the King expresses congratulations and best wishes to His Majesty on the holy month of Ramadan and its last 10 days. They wished His Majesty the King many happy returns with abundant health and happiness to continue leading the development march of the kingdom and enhance its gains and Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. The ceremony began with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. حضره صاحب الجلاله الملك المعظم السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أيها السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وكل عام وأنتم بخير بمناسبة شهر رمضان المبارك خير ما نبدأ به تلاوة عطرة من القرآن الكريم يتلوها على مسامعنا القارئ علي صلاح عمر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم ومن أحسن قولا من من دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقى 
يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع العليم صدق الله العظيم كلمة أهالي المحافظة الشمالية تلقيها نيابة عنهم السيدة ألاء عبد الرزاق البناء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Then Ala Abd al-Razzaq al-Banna delivered a speech on behalf of the people of the governorate in which he congratulated His Majesty the King on the last 10 days of Ramadan. She noted that this annual meeting reflects His Majesty's keenness to communicate with the people, stressing that this embodies the unity and cohesion of Bahraini people, which reflects a unique national model. She congratulated His Majesty the King on the silver jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne, noting that this historical achievement made during His Majesty's prosperous era have placed Bahrain among the advanced countries in all fields and at all levels. She pointed out that the artwork presented to His Majesty was made under the supervision of Dr. Zainab Swar and done by Fawaz Muhammad on behalf of the residents of the Northern Government. She expressed gratitude with what have been achieved in the Government and its vital projects thanks to His Majesty's directives and the services provided by the Government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to achieve the aspirations of the Bahraini people. Al-Banna explained that Bahrainis are inspired with the approach of His Majesty the King's peace, cohesion, humanity, compassion and rapprochement between religions. She highlighted that the government is to adopting the values of communication and openness to all sectors and groups of society through the programs and activities that it organizes in various occasions, inspired by the directives of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. She expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty for his meeting, praying to Allah the Almighty to preserve His Majesty the King. ونقلات عظيمة في العهد الزاهر لجلالتكم أيدكم الله وضعت مملكة البحرين في مصاف الدول المتقدمة على جميع الأصعدة والمستويات والعمل المقدم لجلالتكم باسم أهالي المحافظة الشمالية وبإشراف الدكتورة زينب سوار وتنفيذ الشاب فواز محمد ما هو إلا تجسيد لمسيرة اليوبيل الفضي سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة يملأنا الفخر والأمل بمستقبل واعد بفضل التوجيهات السديدة لجلالتكم أيدكم الله والخدمات التي توفرها الحكومة الموقرة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله تحقيقا لطموحاتنا وتطلعات أبنائنا معربين عن فخرنا بما تشهده المحافظة من مشاريع حيوية ومكتسبات وطنية سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة إننا نستلهم من نهج جلالتكم نهج السلام والتعايش والإنسانية والتراحم والتقارب بين الأديان في استثمار شهر رمضان الفضيل في عمل الخير تحت شعار رمضان شراكة وتكافل فنعمل جاهدين على التواصل من خلال المجالس الرمضانية والتعاون مع أصحاب الأياد البيضاء من مواطنين ومقيمين من خلال مشروع بيوت الخيري لدعم الأسر المتعففة ودعم توزيع السلال الرمضانية على الجمعيات الخيرية وتوزيع الوجبات لإفطار صائم على الطريق 
وإحياء الموروث في إقامة احتفالية القرقعون سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة إن المحافظة الشمالية سائرة على نهج تبني قيم التواصل والانفتاح على كافة القطاعات وفئات المجتمع عبر البرامج والأنشطة التي تنظمها في المناسبات المختلفة مستلهمة بذلك فكرة وتوجيهات وزير الداخلية حفظه الله معالي الفريق أو الركن الشيخ راشد بن عبد الله آل خليفة وهو ما تعمل عليه خلال احتفائها بالأعياد الوطنية لمملكتنا الغالية تحت شعار قائد وشعب فرحة وطن والبرنامج الصيفي تحت شعار وطن وملكنا يجمعنا وغيرها من المناسبات مثل موسم عاشوراء وبرنامج المدن الصحية الذي تطبقه المحافظة الشمالية تحت شعار الصحة للجميع وبالجميع وفي الختام يشرفنا يا صاحب الجلالة أن نعبر لجلالتكم عن جزيل الشكر وعظيم الامتنان لهذا اللقاء التاريخي سائلين المولى العلي القدير أن يحفظ جلالتكم ويرعاكم وأن يجعلكم ذخرا وسندا لمملكة البحرين وشعبها الوفي مجددين أهالي المحافظة الشمالية البيعة في اليوبيل الفضي لجلالتكم وإننا للعهد حافظون وعلى خطى جلالتكم سائرون حفظكم الله وأدام عزكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Then the Northern Governor Ali al-Sheikh Abdul Hussein al-Asfur presented to His Majesty the King a commemorative gift on behalf of the people of the Governorate. مبارك عليكم الشعب كل عام وانتم بخير ان شاء الله. مبارك عليكم العشر الاواخر كلها يومين العيد بعد وراها يلي ان شاء الله ايام كلها اعياد. على كل حال 25 عام يعني معا لنجاح وانجازات وتوفيق وعلى العهد العهد اللي لا يتغير نخدم هالبلد الغالي بكل ما نملك ونضحي من اجلها بكل ما نملك ونحفظ هويتنا ونحفظ ديننا ونحفظ تاريخنا فالله يوفق وهذا اهل بحرين ما تغيروا من الاف السنين ومشكورين عبد الله كيف حالنا؟ جزاك طيب ان شاء الله بخير فرحت بشوفك والله هلا هلا من زمان ايه هلا الحمد لله الحمد لله شباب ولا تغير His Majesty the King welcomed them and exchanged congratulations with them on the occasion, wishing them and the people of Bahrain many happy returns. His Majesty congratulated them on the last 10 days of Ramadan and the advent of Eid al-Fitr. His Majesty added that the achievements made throughout the 25 years urges all to continue serving the country and maintain the Bahraini identity and history as well as religion. His Majesty expressed pride in the development efforts of the people of the Northern Governorate and their positive stances and contributions in maintaining the gains of the national development and building on its civilizational achievements. His Majesty commended these meetings, which stem from the authentic Arab customs and Bahraini heritage that bring together the people of the country as one united family. His Majesty the King affirmed that the national unity protects the kingdom and its gains and will aid in achieving all goals and 
and ambitions. His Majesty praised the numerous and continuous successes achieved by the citizens in various fields and their determination and persistence, adding that they have proving their keenness to serve their country. His Majesty stressed that the Kingdom continues the process of construction and development in all its governorates. Based on its cultural heritage and the aspirations of its people for a bright future and their solidarity to achieve the desired success of the comprehensive national development, His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to grant everyone success and serve in their country and society in contributing to achieving progress. For their part, the well-wishers express thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for his keenness to strengthen communication with citizens and care for their interests and affairs, as well as ensure a decent life for them at all levels. They commended the directives of His Majesty to implement a number of advanced services, development and housing projects and programs in the Northern Governorate. They prayed to Allah the Almighty to grant the kingdom security and prosperity. On the occasion, the Northern Government expressed the people uh, of the Government's pride in visiting His Majesty and thanked His Majesty for the generous hospitality. He also congratulated His Majesty on the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace Dr. Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, his brothers and the uncles of the late Sheikh Khalid bin Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa. His Majesty expressed his sincere condolences over the passing of the deceased, praying to Allah the Almighty to bless him with mercy, rest his soul in vast paradise and grant his family patience and solace. The family of the deceased expressed their gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty for his condolences and sympathy, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect His Majesty the King and bless him with good health and happiness. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation RHF, issued an order to distribute Eid al-Fitr gifts to all the widows and orphans registered with the RHF and directed the foundation led by the representative of His Majesty for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to supervise the distribution to all beneficiaries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser thanked His Majesty for the gifts hailing his support and fatherly care to RHF families and his keenness on sharing the joy of Eid with them, as well as his directives to provide all forms of support to families and ensure a decent and stable life for them. He congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the people of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on the advent of Eid al-Fitr, wishing His Majesty good health and happiness. For his part, RHF Secretary General Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa affirmed that His Majesty's annual gift stems from his keenness on supporting citizens in various occasions and to follow up on their conditions and needs by providing all services, particularly RHF families. He noted that the gifts bring joy to the RHF families. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the newly appointed ambassador to Japan to Bahrain, Okaya Sako at Rifa'a Palace. His Royal Highness reaffirmed the long-standing Bahrain-Japan relations which have grown over the years through robust multi-sector collaboration and strategic partnership. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to furthering bilateral relations and coordination to meet mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness welcomed the Ambassador to the Kingdom and wished her success in performing her diplomatic duties. During the meeting, regional and global developments and issues of common interest were discussed. For her part, the Ambassador expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to furthering Bahrain-Japan relations and wish the Kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the newly appointed Ambassador of Korea to Bahrain, Hyun Sang Koo, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to further relations and collaboration between the two countries to meet mutual aspirations. His Royal Highness welcomed the ambassador to the kingdom and wished him success in performing his diplomatic duties. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahrain-South Korea multi-sector collaboration, stressing the importance of furthering the partnership across all sectors. Regional and global developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. The ambassador expressed gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to furthering Bahrain-South Korea relations and wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Baka Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Director of Antiquities and Museums at Baka, Dr. Salman Ahmed Al Mahari, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of continuing to strengthen Baka's role in achieving the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Royal Highness noted Bahrain's rich culture and heritage, which is evidenced by its artifacts and antiquities. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of those responsible for the culture and antiquities sector in promoting the history of Bahrain and preserving its cultural identity, wishing them further success in achieving the desired goals. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of archaeological and historical sites as evidence of Bahrain's heritage. His Royal Highness highlighted the role of these sites in supporting cultural tourism and the importance of expanding the sector for the benefit of the kingdom. For his part, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness and commended his unwavering support for the culture and antiquities sector. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Majesty, the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of Babco Energies, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the heads and members of the Board of Directors companies affiliated with Babco Energies and a number of CEOs and ambassadors accredited to Bahrain on the occasion of Ramadan. First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was present. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed the need to adopt the best practices in facing energy challenges to implement the group's plans to meet the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the aspirations of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He congratulated the attendees on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. His Highness pointed out that the importance of adopting best practices and facing the challenges of the energy sector is an important part of achieving sustainable development and achieving energy security goals. In order to enhance social and economic inclusion through efforts to provide job opportunities and enhance sustainable development in societies affected by the energy industry by changing behaviors and encouraging more investment in the sector. His Highness thanked all workers in Babco Energies for their great efforts and hard work and their keenness to follow the best professional practices to apply them widely to achieve a sustainable energy system that contributes to achieving economic growth in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Nasser El Bina project work site implemented by Ibn Khaldun National School and dedicated to refurbishing homes for those in need in the Muharraq government. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed the vital role of Bahraini youth in the development of the nation through their national work and leading volunteer work, which translates the visions of His Majesty the King to empower them, to provide them with opportunities to become active partners in building the nation. 
He expressed pride in Bahraini youth and their skills, creativity and innovation to implementation. He stated that Nasr al-Bina project embodies the authenticity of the Bahraini people, noting that the project achieves success and preserves the dignity of underprivileged families. He expressed admiration and pride in the students' implementation of the project and renovation of houses, noting that their efforts constitute an important national role in humanitarian contributions that enrich the lives of others. His Highness hailed the development of the project by providing job opportunities and commended Ibn Khaldun National School's efforts in encouraging students' initiatives and supporting them to achieve national goals. The first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhro, intervened at the high-level meeting for speakers of parliaments or their deputies where they discussed multilateralism, the root causes, and possible solutions. Fakhro affirmed the necessity for the great powers to play a fundamental role in creating a constructive dialogue based on mutual respect and taking into account the interests of all countries. He also stressed the necessity of amending international regulations, the nature of the powers granted to the Security Council and the powers of the Assembly. He called for strengthening cooperation between international organizations for public interest, stressing the importance of developing systems to enhance the implementation of international resolutions. Fakhro also stressed the need to reform the IPU system to ensure that its decisions are binding on everyone, calling for amending the voting system on the emergency item in the IPU's assembly meetings. Bahrain's parliamentary division delegation participated in the meeting of the IPU Governing Council held to discuss the reports of the Union Standing Committee. During the meeting, the Governing Council approved holding the IPU's 149th Assembly in Geneva from October 13th until 17th, while the 150th Assembly is to be held in Uzbekistan from 5th until 9th of April 2025. The council elected members to fill the various vacancies in the council's committees. Shura Council member Dalal Zayed intervened during the meeting of the committee to promote respect for international humanitarian law. She affirmed the need to double efforts to enhance the involvement of young people in humanitarian work and international humanitarian law to gain experiences from international experts in peace negotiations. As Zayed noted the importance of benefiting from legal and international competencies and experiences to create qualified young people capable of acquiring the mechanisms and systems of international humanitarian law. The committee reviewed recent developments related to situations involving international humanitarian law and refugee protection issues. Shura Council member and member of IPU Bureau for Women Parliamentarians Hala Ramzi Fayez called for the need to discuss ways to support parliamentary women who are exposed to violence in conflict areas, especially in Palestine, stressing the need to consider the low humanitarian situation in conflict areas. Ramzi said that the Bureau of Women Parliamentarians discussed a number of proposals related to strengthening the role of women in parliamentarians, noting that she made a proposal to discuss the issue of women exposed to violence in the upcoming Forum of Women Parliamentarians scheduled in October. She indicated that the Bureau discussed the preparations for the 38th Forum of Women Parliamentarians and the work of the Bureau accompanying the IPU's 149th Assembly. Representatives Council member Hassan Ibrahim Hassan participated in a workshop on humanitarian security titled Preparing Parliamentarians to Build Peace and Prevent Conflicts. He stressed the necessity of unifying efforts between international parliaments to develop advanced legislation which supports peace and development in an innovative, unconventional manner. 
Hassan pointed out that there are many policies and legislation that parliamentarians can participate in achieving peace and preventing conflicts based on their constitutional rights. He said that Bahrain supports and participates in peacekeeping operations and emphasized its positive results in countries and peoples that are exposed to armed wars and conflicts. Hassan noted that the kingdom supports all international steps aimed at spreading peace and tolerance among people, indicating that Bahrain supports reforms or development for peacekeeping operations that help reach the goals of the UN in preserving international peace and security. The Supreme Council for Women, represented by Dr. Fatma Liblushi, participated in the UN 68th session of the Annual Commission on the Status of Women. The meeting discussed a range of topics, including the progress made in implementing the agreed conclusions adopted at the 63rd session in 2019. Dr. Liblushi outlined Bahrain's initiatives to bolster legal frameworks, regulations and policies aimed at eradicating all types of gender discrimination. These efforts focus on creating and implementing strategies to boost women's involvement in politics and the economy, as well as expanding avenues for women to take on leadership positions across diverse sectors and organizations. She highlighted the efforts to establish business incubators and centers to support women entrepreneurs' projects and consolidate social justice and equal opportunities. She emphasized Bahrain's continuous support for the progress of women and enhancing their contributions as active partners in all areas of development. The Sunni Waqf Directorate assigned four Imam reciters to perform Taraweeh prayers and Qiyam prayers throughout Ramadan in mosques and Islamic centers in Germany and the UK. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Muhammad bin Iftais al Hajri, said that the assignment reflects royal support for Holy Quran centers and reciters. Hamza Mu'adh Al Abdul Razzaq and Salman Abdul Aziz Al Nafai will perform the prayers in Germany, while Saleh Al Mhaisen and Ammar Hassan Al Tayyib will perform the prayers. Al Hajri said that this initiative comes in coordination with the Central Council of Muslims in Germany for the second consecutive year, as the scope of participation expanded this year in coordination with the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs, and Waqf to perform Taraweeh prayer in consolidation with the London Muslim Centre. The provision of Holy Quran recitation lessons in the educational institutions affiliated with the Ministry of Education in Bahrain encourages the memorization, recitation, and tajweed of the Holy Quran. It is also a step to strengthen Arabic language skills and pronunciation. These lessons are presented in a precise manner concerned with teaching young students the Holy Quran and its sciences, as well as the correct pronunciation.